Hi. So a lot of people have been asking me what it is I think of TechServe closing. It's been in the news, it was in the New York Times, and they announced that they will be closing their retail store soon. And since I own a repair store that does a lot of the similar services to what TechServe does in the same geographic area, I've been getting a lot of stuff in my YouTube comment stream asking what I think of this. And to be honest with you, I'm surprised that this did not happen a really long time ago. So if you just look and analyze the business model, TechServe offers, they offer IT services, they offer, um, you know, they sell these products and they also offer repair services. Now they're an authorized service center, which means they have to do things very, in a very, very specific way. And they're also a really huge company. So they have a very, very large space and they're paying something around, I would have to guess just based on looking at the size of it, something like $100,000 a month for a retail location. And that, that's a lot of money. And I also, I'm familiar with what the profit margins are in retail if you're selling these products and you are not Apple themselves. So again, Apple makes their products. So there is more profit in it for Apple to sell their products than for a third party. There's not a lot of profit margin to be had there as a third party vendor selling those products. So then we look at the repair side and I know that they're authorized and I remember, if, uh, just to give you an idea of what I thought of their pricing, I, I still have the domain name registered from almost eight years ago, way less than techserve.com. And the way that I decided to go about that domain name is I wanted something that was easy for customers to, you know, easy for customers to identify with over the phone. And most people knew how to spell TechServe far better than they knew how to spell my, my last name. And the way that I got that domain name was every single phone call I got started with something like, well, this is our problem. We went to TechServe and they wanted $800. And I would look up the problem and I would look up what was causing it. And I'd look and I'd see, okay, it's a $40 part and it looks like it's going to be 20 minutes of my time. What? And every day I would get a new call about something. TechServe said 1,000. TechServe said 1,250. TechServe wanted 400 for this. TechServe wanted 1,500 for this data recovery. And it would be something that like DD Rescue got all the data from in, 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 in two hours. Or it would be something where I like, rep you know, it was just one of these things where every single phone call I got was like that. So that's where I came up with, with that uh, domain name. And the pricing was just... It, it was what you expect from an authorized service facility. I mean, come on. Again, they're not allowed to replace a screen. They have to replace an entire assembly. They're not allowed to replace a keyboard. They have to replace a top case. And the reality is that people don't, they don't want to pay for that shit. You know, you know like, people don't want to pay $750 to revive a $900 thing. People don't want to pay $1,250 to revive a $1,500 thing. And if you work within the Apple authorized service provider uh, ecosystem, you can't offer solutions to customers that will actually save them money and will actually fix their specific problem. I don't want to replace my case because I have an issue with my keyboard. I don't want to replace my case because I have an issue with the glued-in battery. I don't want to replace the entire display assembly and hinges and back cover and all that because I have an issue with my screen. And I don't want to replace my motherboard because a fuse blew, you know? And it's just one of those things where as time goes on, I kind of wondered to myself, how is this business model working? Because if you look at the other things they do, retail... There's a lot of options for retail now. So, I mean, Amazon, you know, Amazon wasn't around when TechServe was around. Newegg.com wasn't around when TechServe was around. Uh, I don't even think Best Buy was big in, in Manhattan and New York when, uh, when TechServe was around. So you didn't have a lot of options to buy these products, but now you have all these options to buy these products that are often cheaper than the retail outlets. So the retail side, eh. The repair side, eh. And then you get the, uh, the, uh, the, the IT services side of the small business IT services. And I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for this, but I really feel like that's something that is going to be going downhill as time goes on. And just to give a little bit of explanation as to why I think that's the case, um, well, you know, with, with business IT services, I don't think it's the same way it was 20 years ago. Like 20 years ago, it was totally acceptable to be a genius in your field and be a complete computer illiterate. 10 years ago, slightly less acceptable. Now... It's just expected, like, you should be able to figure out how Google Drive works on your own. You should be able to figure out how to share a printer on your own. You should be able to figure out how to do a lot of these basic things on your own. So there's a, a higher expected level of competency when it comes to anything related to IT. So when it comes to small businesses, it's not so much that... I don't think it's so much about we're going to spend $400 or $300 an hour for this IT company to help me with this so much as it is Matt in sales is pretty good with computers. Let's just 
give him a bonus or whatever and have him help us with this stuff. Or let, and then you get the cloud service provider. So again, you, you, know, you don't have to set up a PBX to have voice over IP. You can just uh, have hosted PBX solutions through Voice Pulse and these other companies. You can have all these different hosted solutions that make everything so much easier because you're dealing directly with a company that's going to support the product that they're giving you. They're going to support it because they're hosting it. So it's not so much that you need an IT company. You can just have somebody in the office that's kind of good with the, with the computer stuff be the person who interfaces with the cloud services provider and the cloud services provider very often you know what you're paying for is to have your hand held through the entire situation and when you when you deal with that it's like you know the small the whole you know small business IT craze is you know, the small business IT support craze is something that I think is going to slowly start going downhill when you combine again higher higher average competence of regular people when it comes to computers and just lower difficulty of doing most of what it is that people want to do thanks to new solutions, cloud providers and all that. Then you get to the third one which is repairs and you know there, in 2008-9 when I started doing this stuff there were very very few people who were Mac centric working with the consumer to try to do a lot of the things that I do and save the money. I had you know, a couple of small stores doing this and some of those small stores didn't even really want to deal with Mac products because as I've shown you in many of these videos they're a pain in the ass to repair and they're a pain in the ass to get parts to. They're just annoying. But now there's a lot more. Again, there's myself, there's a bunch of uh, service providers in this area that do that. So there's increased competition on that front. So it only makes sense that this is something that is going to happen over time. And I, their, their prices are high. I don't have anything against them for their prices being high. I understand that their hands are tied as an Apple authorized service provider. I feel bad for anybody who's an Apple authorized service provider. I feel bad for anybody that has to look into the face of their customer with a straight face, honest to God straight face, and say, you have a blown fuse and a bad Z key. You have to pay us 750 bucks. You know, I, I don't understand how they could do that day in and day in, day out and deal with the customer abuse that they're going to get when they tell people that and still come to work every day. I, I really feel bad for the people that have to do that. Uh, the one thing that I would like to mention here, though, the one point that I would like to bring up comes from an article that I remember from a couple of years ago. It's, it, was, it, was, it was an article in response to somebody that... Um, that uh, you know that does unauthorized repairs and their response was we've been around for 23 years said jasmine hupp a spokeswoman for the company we're not a college kid who set up shop to do it this weekend and won't be around in 90 days after the guarantee is up and that was something that really resonated me at the time when i read that article that included that quote in it from from uh, miss jasmine hupp because when i started doing this I was the college kid and I wasn't doing it from my dorm room. I was doing it from a $400 a month apartment that at the time I could barely afford while I was going to LaGuardia Community College and I was, going, I was living in an apartment. It was actually a house that was for sale and um, somebody that I used to work for said, you know, you can live here for this very small amount of money a month in exchange, just make sure it looks nice, make sure nobody robs it, make sure it's good for when people uh, come through for the walkthrough so that it actually sells. And I, and I agreed and I was very, very grateful grateful to him for offering me that opportunity. So I was the college kid that had just set up this weekend to do that. And I took offense to that because I, I think that, that your ability to offer good service and how you treat your customers shouldn't have anything to do about whether you're in college or not, nor should it have to do with how long ago it is you set up to perform a specific service. And I find this kind of ironic uh, because I can't find it on the internet archive right now because the Wayback Machine is down for maintenance. But I'm I'm pretty sure the tech, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, because a lot of, when I say I think this is the case, but look it up, people, people start to get really, really, like, you know, self-righteous and go, you said that and it's wrong. No, I didn't. I said, look it up. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that on their site, they had some type of $200 or $250 spill cleaning service, and you had to pay for it, whether or not the device actually worked at the end of it. I'm pretty sure they had something like that. So when I read comments like this that say things like, that won't be around in 90 days after the guarantee is up, and they're talking about the college kid, what I find ironic is that the college kid, like myself, or the person that they're referring to in this article, offer a lot of no-fix, no-fee services, me Meaning that not only do we offer a guarantee, but we're not going to take your money if we didn't fix the problem, which is more than I can say for them. 
And you know, so it's so it's just interesting to be re to be reading this article in the New York Times six years later about how the company that's that's kind of shitting on the college kid is going out of business. One of my older videos is uh, is on are you a real business or what is the meaning of a real business? Let me just see if I can find that here, so I because I know I'm going to forget to link it in the comments. It's it's kind of like my, my my thing to forget to link things in the comments and annotations when I say I will, but. I did this video a while ago on what a real business is. And to me, a real business is it's it's not about uh, you know, it's not about the office. It's not about uh, any you know, any of this stuff here. So let's just here we go. Minimize me. It's yeah, this is the video I did. So it's again it's, it, I don't think it has anything to do with the with you know, with the the office or the employees that have t-shirts with the business logo on it or any of that crap. Being a real business is about treating your business as if it's real. If you treat your business as if it's real and you treat your customers' problems as if they're your problems and you care about what you do, you are a real business. Whether or not you set up a week ago, whether or not you set up in a college dorm room. And I've always encouraged people to actually start from something low or to start from wherever it is, you know, wherever, wherever it is they are right now and to, de and to learn and develop as much as they can. I don't look down on you because you're working out of a dorm room or anything like that. So I find it really, really interesting to read an article in that same paper six years later saying that the company that kind of shit on my business model has, ha has now decided to close its doors. And particularly with that whole guarantee thing, again, I, I, don't, I don't know how we see a guarantee, but I've never ch I don't charge people for services if they're not successful. And it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't know what to say. Again, I've never met people from TechServe. For all I know, they're really nice people. But for that comment, and the fact that I'm sitting here in my office, my $650 Aeron chair, in front of my TLCS 3.6 speakers, in front of my nice fancy rework setup and my acoustically treated room, with all the business that I have and students coming next week from the Netherlands, from Brazil, from Spain, uh, to pay good money to learn repair from here. Uh, oh, TechServe, fuck you. Enjoy closing. That's, that's really all I have to say about that. And for everybody else that's starting a business, that's starting from the bottom, uh, just, just take it as a lesson from me. Don't let somebody else put down where you started or where you came from. And you know, you really can, you can accomplish whatever you seek to accomplish so long as you stay focused on what the customer wants. Again, what I've always focused on is customer, I know that customers are impatient and want fast service. I know people don't want to pay if something doesn't work. And I know that people are more than happy to have me fix their primary issue without fixing all this other crap that doesn't need to be fixed. And that, that's just what I base my business on. So I don't, I don't give people a number when they walk into the store. We deal with them immediately. I don't replace entire parts of a device when only one little part is wrong. Again, success, it doesn't have to do with the fact that you're authorized. It doesn't have to do with the fact that you have a $100,000 location with a fucking hipster 20-year-old Coca-Cola machine or whatever in it. It has to do with giving your customers what they want. And if you give your customers what they want, if you offer good service, you'll be in business and you'll be sitting here like me laughing at the people that made fun of your business model in an article for the paper six years ago. And you'll be smiling about it the same way that I am right now.